Francis Calpoli, utilitarian and practical, yet so accomplished in its visual integrity and academic standing in the collegiate world. As students go about their days, they study, hang out with friends, and learn by doing. However, there is one central factor that connects us all, food. Calpoli students from the early 1900s had access to small dining areas that were mostly buffet style, accommodating the small population of students hungry from their classes. As Calpoli grew to fill the stomachs of more students, by the 1950s, the construction of new dining halls like the South Cafeteria were built to accommodate the growing army of thousands of students. With the advent of the 21st century, Cal Poly has continued this growth towards the quality and variety of food on campus. Fiji's was recently renovated with the addition of more campus markets and snack areas on campus. In addition, there is a new dining hall called 1901, which has been established as of 2024, providing students with more options and a space to eat. But is it enough? Dorm food has long been the bane of college students' existence. Fresh, nutritious food is hard to find on campus, and off-campus options are difficult for first-year students due to a multitude of factors, like lack of transportation and monetary limits. But for those with dietary restrictions, this problem is significantly worse. Not only do these students deal with the limited bland options, but they also struggle with the lack of dietary alternatives which are necessary for their health or religious reasons. Food. 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 Food is such an essential part of our daily lives, fueling our movements and thoughts as we go about our day. While there is a question of nutritious sources of food on campus, there are also specific dietary restrictions that do not fit on the regular menu. Well, first off, I went vegan because more for health reasons, and um, I wanted to see if it was just the me that was causing um certain like health issues or if it was um animal direct products that was causing but um i mean the food here mainly that is like plant-based that they do give us for options it's usually processed so it's not the most healthiest um i feel like there are some options but whether they're sufficient or not that's like that's the that's like an objective statement. I feel like um, Cal Poly could do a little bit more on diversifying the food. Cause I mean, there are healthy options, but only salad bar we have is red radish. And like, no one wants to eat that. Students who struggle with finding options, one who has a dietary restriction and the other who has a preference, yet both cannot find the food resource they need to fulfill their day-to-day -day life as a student. In an article by Z.W. Taylor, an assistant professor at the University of Southern Mississippi, the studies examine the causes behind food insecurity in college students. He explains the expensive nature of college combined with the growing wealth gap in the United States is mostly responsible for the food insecurity faced by students. More than a third of college students struggle with food insecurity. This is highly visible at Cal Poly, a school with extremely low income diversity and exceedingly high cost for dining plans compared to other CSUs. As the costs of college have gone up, college students have been forced to make difficult financial choices. Some of these choices include skipping meals to pay for tuition and rent. Combined with the fact that students aren't allowed to have a car on campus, it's no surprise that students have difficulties with nutritious food. Yeah, it's definitely not made easy to go get fresh food. Like, I know I probably could walk all the way over to the what's it called market? I haven't been if you can't tell. Um, but I just, it's, I don't usually have it in me at the end of the day to walk or middle of the day when I'm not busy to walk all the way over there to lug then groceries all the way back up. Despite California being considered the breadbasket of the world by many and Cal Poly having a thriving agriculture program, it's proven to be a struggle to find fresh food and more specifically, foods that fit within dietary restrictions. We have like one campus market and that's, even then, there's not much in the market itself. So like, if, you're, if you want to make food by your own means, you're going to have to go outside of campus. And for first years, they're, they're not allowed to bring cars. I know we're not expected to be able to cook for ourselves, but especially in, I live in Sierra Madre, 
the only place I could cook for myself is the tiny, tiny little kitchen in the community center, which is a bit of a walk from my tower. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just don't even think of it. Additionally, because first year students can't easily buy their own groceries, the majority have to do their best work with Grubhub in order to get their meals. That in and of itself only provides more problems, especially with the customization option. Customizations usually certainly aren't super specific, so it's kind of difficult to customize it. Um, and sometimes there isn't a customized option, so you have to put a note, but even then you don't know if the product that either way you're going to be consuming has like egg, milk, or anything that's like derived from animals. However, workers seem unsure about what they can do to alleviate this problem because... Basically right here, what we do, it's uh, a little bit of everything for everyone. Unfortunately, as Gabriel said, because of the vast amount of students that have to be served, the campus struggles to personalize meals for individual students who don't fit the mold for an average diet. This puts students at risk for isolation by visibly marking them as different, by forcing them to eat elsewhere, to ask about ingredients, or to ask for alternative food. Researchers from Louisiana State University's School of Nutrition and Food Sciences conducted a study in which they determined the financial and personal challenges of students with dietary restrictions. Within it, they found that out of 104 students with dietary restrictions they surveyed, 87.5% were found to face gastrointestinal symptoms. These symptoms can easily cause disruptions to students' lives, bringing an increase in stress, embarrassment, money spent on medication to alleviate symptoms, missing class and work, and feelings of isolation. Though none of these physical problems were expanded upon by our interviewees, they readily talked about the emotional impact of not being considered. Like everyone at college always complains about the lack of options of food and like getting tired of the same stuff, but it's like when you, instead of 15 options, you only have five, you get tired of it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's definitely tough. Um, I fall into a, a bit of a rut of when they shift over the menus for like Vista Grande, I pick like one thing that I like from three of the locations and I get that every night for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not particularly something I would describe as super healthy. However, Cal Poly does seem to be trying to change their practices and provide more diversity and options for their students, demonstrated through the creation of things such as the food pantry and by partnering with food trucks such as Plant Ivy and What's Cooking Kosher. That being said, there is still much to be done and the students themselves have thoughts on what can be done to better the problems they face, especially because workers at the dining halls believe that the options provided to students are adequate. We have Balance Right Here Cafe, which will provide any any allergen free food for anybody that has any type of allergy. It could be to milk, any kind of allergy, we have that spot. Options are changed every quarter. So with that being said, we change our options for the students periodically. While the campus workers may believe that they're providing adequate options, the students have something quite different to say. I think the setups of both of our dining areas, if they were a little more traditional dining hall cafeteria type thing where there were options for salad bar and like, um, um, or like going up and getting the hot meal of the day or like all of that. Yeah, I feel like they're trying to add more um, variety to their foods, but it's not like, it's not, in practice it's not really doing well. I guess like, expanding the express station because we do have a buffet but the express station only has like two items for dinner time and that's not enough for me personally to call it a buffet style. As expressed by our interviewees, the all-you-can-eat buffet style typically seen at colleges seems to be much more popular than the a la carte method currently being used by Cal Poly. However, Express seems to be a step in the right direction. But the next move to create change is having the students stand up for themselves. One big effort to overcome this is seen through the creation of What's Cooking Kosher food truck. Designed to represent the needs of Jewish students, Rabbi Hillel and his food truck work continuously to make an effort for the recognition of the Jewish community at Cal Poly Slow with delicious food. He recognized the lack of access to dietary specific foods on campus. The main the main step that I saw that actually made things happen 
was when it came from the students, you know, as long as I was advocating for it, it was a, you know, a guy off campus, a rabbi, who's advocating for something, but either we need it or we don't need it. As soon as it became a student-driven item, and students then came, hi, my name is so-and-so, um, I'm kosher, there's currently nothing available for meeting on campus, can we talk about it? And as that, you know, as that demand grew, as students were requesting it, the university is sort of mandated to, to, to be there for their students, right? That's their job, is to be there. From struggling to offer nutritious options for students on campus to providing even worse choices for dietary restricted students, college campuses have a lot they can improve on. While it is understandable that dining halls would struggle to accommodate dietary restricted students due to the vast number of students they serve daily and how much organization must go into planning meals, what is not understandable is how much advocacy students must go through to have their voices heard. Though Cal Poly Dining website has a small tab, hidden away, that instructs students on how to work with dining staff to accommodate their needs, it doesn't seem like enough. They explain all of the options they have, which seem limited, sandwiches, salads, wraps, and other side dishes, and not like a full meal for some. It is a step in the right direction, but this amount of effort shouldn't be required in order for students to feel safe with what they eat. Time and time again, it's been shown that advocacy is the path to success. By standing up for themselves and what they want, students are able to make changes and create solutions that benefit everyone on campus.